morning, Chris. Nice to see you again. Uh, good morning, Stephen. It's lovely to see you too. Thank um, you for joining us. Chris, I'd like it if you started by telling the audience a little bit about your professional background and how you ended up where you are today, please. So um, I'm a doctor by background. Um, I trained in the UK and did my undergraduate in the southwest, a very beautiful part of the country. And um, after my undergraduate training, I started my postgraduate training in pathology. And in pathology, that's where I was led to cervical screening and the importance of cervical screening. And that was what really brought me to the science and magic of why we should move to self-sampling in um, cervical screening. I also have a strong background in digital and health, which has been part of my undergraduate and postgraduate experience today, which is why those two things coming together have led me to creating Thea, which is a digital solution to delivering self-sampling in cervical screening. So could you explain a little bit more about Thea, please? Because I think it's quite revolution. So um, Thea is based on... Um, two or three fundamental things, and that is comfort and convenience for women in healthcare. Um, and where we look specifically is in cervical screening. So for the last 50 or 60 years, cervical screening has been quite an intimate, often embarrassing and uncomfortable experience for women um, with an in-person smear test. But with the recent innovations over the last 15 to 20 years, this paradigm um, can shift to self-sampling. And so we've created Thea, which is a digital health platform, which provides healthcare systems, the ability to give women access to self-sampling devices that they can then screen themselves. And the aim of that is to A, make the experience more comfortable and convenient, but B, also to increase the amount of women who actually get screened, because the most important thing is that we get the highest number of people screened, so the fewest number of people get cervical cancer. So this all originated from the experiences you've had as a medic in the NHS? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> my experience in the NHS um, and my reading around the area brought me to understand the system and how it worked in the science, but the true fundamental experience that actually kick-started Thea was uh, my co-founder's experience as a woman trying to book an appointment and kind of struggle with the bureaucracy and the system of getting an appointment for an investigation or test that's uncomfortable, you don't really want, um, but you know you need. And that's what really kind of in the crucible of knowledge and problem was thinking, okay, well, can we create a better solution? And that better solution is a digital approach that women can manage and handle themselves. Chris, would you mind showing us what the device looks like? So it's a very simple process. So we have a digital platform that people log on to and use to access and order their tests. But what women will actually receive in the post is a lovely brown box like this, um, discreet, um, recyclable. Um, and on the inside, we've got messaging to try and help kind of increase the amount of uptake. It's a box that is kind of relatively familiar probably for people who use um order things online or purchase anything we've got kind of very beautiful instructions that are individually designed the device that we use is the evelyn swap which is a well-renowned um danish product that's been on the market uh, i believe for the last 10 years it has a high level of evidence behind it um and we use that because when we tested individual users um they said that this was a high quality device, easy to use and a high standard behind it. It also has some special features around the way that it's barcoded that enables us to digitally integrate systems so that pa patients don't have to fill out 101 forms to get their tests done and laboratories don't have to process those forms. They can just receive a digital message instead. For the client, do they get a digitalized report or how does a report come to them? So, yeah, the way that we are building the business is that for the healthcare system or provider that is enabling patients to access care, our system will generate um, three reports, um, one that our system will hold, one that will be sent to the patient, and that patient one will be in patient focused language. Um, and designed to engage the actions required from them. And then a third report will be sent to the healthcare provider so that the healthcare provider knows and understands where patients have gone through the journey and can act on that. Chris, I understand the company's won a number of significant awards. Could you talk to me about those, please? 
So we've been um, very fortunate and worked really hard to win a um, couple of Innovate UK awards. So uh, awards from some of the large UK industrial science bodies, um, one for over half a million pounds to help develop and deliver our platform. Chris, can we talk about the logistics, which is really one of the most, most outstanding features of your system? Yeah, so I think the best place to start with that is to think about the current paradigm. Um, in the Western world, which is huge healthcare systems sending paper letters to women or possibly giving them a phone call to say you're due for a face-to-face -face smear test. And that means that women have to take time off of work, organise time away from family or childcare to go to a primary care or family doctor centre and have what is considered by 66% of women an uncomfortable and embarrassing experience, um, and for 20% of women a quite painful experience. Whereas for us, we kind of completely change that. So we use a digital platform, so we are able to email, text um, individuals to say that they're due for a test. That then gives them a link to our website and our platform. Through our platform, they're able to, just like any other e-commerce website, complete an order form, quick as anything. It's really short, one page. Once they've done that, they then receive a box in the mail. The box comes with, as I said, instructions, physical device, um, and the ability to send it back. So it's got the pre-returns label built in. Um, they send that back to the laboratory. The laboratory should take two or three days. After that, patients receive a result directly to them, and we are then able to engage patients on a digital platform, um, which I think for the 21st century woman is definitely the way that they want to be engaged. Chris, can you tell me something about the business model? So the business model for Thea is that we um, sell our product directly to healthcare providers, so people like the NHS or private healthcare systems, and not directly to individuals. And the reason why we do that is screening is a public health problem and a public health benefit. And we know that people don't tend to pay for screening tools because they don't think it's a problem. And and because of that, the actual value is held by healthcare providers. And that's why we see it as a real system delivery model. So Thea is built to be deployed and delivered to healthcare providers and then directed to consumers or to end patients. So we have a patient facing um, end where patients order their tests, receive their results and do all of the communications. But we also have an administration back end. Um, that is bespokely designed for healthcare systems and providers to manage the patients that come in, understand the analytics as to who's responding, who's responding to what messaging, who's not responding to what messaging, and then also to manage those people so that they can target and um, personalize both the messaging, the frequency of tests, and also um, solve problems around tests that haven't been delivered or haven't had the results or have unusual results. How serious is the problem right now in the Western For cervical screening? So um, in the West, it's quite serious, especially if you look at people who are from um, deprived backgrounds or from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, and I think the big number is this, that in the UK alone, and this is very similar in America and the rest of Europe, over the last 20 years, there has been a 15 to 20% reduction in the uptake of screening. Um, and what that has meant is that the rates of cancer in young women, um, so women under the age of 40, are at their highest levels for over 20 years, um, despite vaccination. Uh, and secondly to that, if you look at women from deprived backgrounds or from different cultural backgrounds, you'll actually see that you are 65% more likely not to come for screening if you're from those backgrounds, but you're over 165% more likely to be diagnosed with cervical cancer. Um, and so the burden of cancer and disease is heavily held in that bottom fifth of society. And we hope that a digital technology like this, which means that single mothers who are working zero hours contracts don't have to take time away from work or find people to look after their children in order for them to need to screen themselves. Is it a simple technique to obtain the sample? 
Yeah, it's really simple. Um, there's a huge body of evidence to suggest that taking a sample is um, really easy. So in the three or four studies that are out there comparing uh, the sample taken by an individual as compared to taken by a clinician show almost a 100% concordance, which goes to show that individuals are just as competent as clinically trained professionals at taking these samples. Chris, can you tell me something about the cost burden of this disease? So um, cervical cancer... Um, is the most prevalent disease in women, um, or most prevalent cancer, sorry, I should say, in women under the age of 40 and over the age of 25. And the average woman diagnosed with cervical cancer will cost the healthcare system anywhere between 25,000 to 50,000 um, pounds to treat, depending on their severity. And that in the UK, when you look at it, is costing about 30 million pounds a year. But when you expand up and look at the whole screening program, the whole screening program is costing £1.2 billion to deliver. Because if you look at the difference, um, actually that screening program saves approximately £2 billion a year in diagnoses caught early. And what we do as a product is actually we reduce that screening program burden. So instead of it being 1.2 billion, with our model and funding system, we think that we can reduce that 1.2 billion pound cost down to around 350 million pounds for a population of about 30 million women. Um, and in addition to that, with increased uptake, that 30 million pounds I spoke about in terms of cancer diagnoses, we think we can bring down to below 10 million by increasing uptake. So not only do we decrease the cost of delivering screening, but we will decrease the cost of cancers that get caught because we're catching more at a much earlier stage. Chris, where are you looking to place the product at this point in time? So we're currently designing the product around um, Western markets and developed um, systems, especially developed postal systems. So mainly uh, the EU and Europe and North America, um, uh, places where digital healthcare is much more kind of effective currently. However, in the long term, we do look to develop in third world countries where um, they have no screening program currently. And probably it would be a good innovation for them to go for a very low cost at home self-sampling model instead of starting with an in-person model that we've built in the West. Um, we're looking at large healthcare providers, both public and private. Um, Thank you very much for your time today, Chris. It's been great to talk to you. I hope to talk to you again in another six months when you're further down the track with developments and, um, and the business has expanded. But I think what you've done is quite revolutionary. And I think it's well and truly overdue, public health. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Stephen.